we do love you. And we're not ashamed to confess even publicly that we love you. No one else has done for you us what you have. And we're grateful. Lord, I'm grateful for you allowing me to handle your word. But certainly, oh Lord, there are those who are far greater than I am, but in spite of me, you have allowed me. And I thank you for it. I stand with awesome tasks of bringing your word before your people. And I pray right now, God, that you will move in this place. Anything that might block your word going forth, move it right now in the name of Jesus. I pray that you will grant your servant clarity of thought and preaching power. That I may meet the spiritual needs of your people. You see, Father, we want to be a better people. We want to serve you more. We want to serve you in truth. So speak to us right now. For your divine word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. There was a quote being used several years ago. And we even use it as a theme in our church. And that theme was making the main thing the main thing. And I declare that this is a powerful statement. And it's a banner which the church today should pay close attention to. For the church of God is not careful, it will find themselves not making the main thing the main thing. Peter right. Drucker, a business guru, once said, and I quote, after a certain period of time, organizations concentrate on doing things right rather than doing the right things. And what he's saying is this, if organizations aren't careful, they can be so concerned with getting the message and the words right, that they forget about the content of the message. Just be helpful to the hearers. You can be so concerned about planning your program until you miss out on what your program should really be all about. 
Amen. 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 You can be so upset because there's no food after the program that you forget about those who should be saved through the program. And there is a lot of truth with that. Both of these are powerful statements. And I declare it's a banner for which the church should pray today. We can get so caught up in things that we have misguided priorities and find ourselves engaging in what really does not matter. Deeper. If we're not careful, we can find ourselves worrying about things that are not worthy of our time. And the devil knows this. Because you see, some things, God says, leave it to me. And yet we find ourselves meddling in everybody's business. Caught up. And things are not important. Deeper, we can have a misconception of what the church is all about. While the church is social, the church is not a social club. While the church is leading forth, the church will lead forth in Jesus' name. While the church is a helper, a church is not a helper just when you need it. But a church is a helper for all those who come before the body of Christ. Declaring my surrender my life to Jesus. And here in this passage, Jesus comes and confronts and challenges the Pharisees. And the word he uses throughout the whole chapter is woe. And what Jesus is saying to the world, I'm sorrowful. As a matter of fact, I'm so sorrowful until I'm grieved. I feel bad about the situation. He says, my heart is broken. My spirit is broken. Because of what I see going on. Jesus, in speaking to them, was angry at their sins. And what those sins were doing to his people. And the attitude of Jesus was one of painful sorrow. Because the Pharisees were blinded to God's truth and also blinded to their own sins. They were blinded to what God saith the Lord. And they spent so much time worrying about somebody else until they couldn't find time to worry about their own sins. My Lord, my Lord. And Jesus uses a tough word. He calls them hypocrites. The Bible says Jesus called them hypocrites. Hypocrites originally mean play actors. That's what they originally mean. But by this time, the term is also used for two-faced people. So Jesus says, woe unto you two-faced people. Because your behavior is different than your belief. Or your behavior varies, depends on who you are standing with. Let me make a little, take a look here. When you were sinners, you act like a sinner. Come on now. And when you are with saints, you act like you were saved. But Jesus says, because of your actions, you are a hypocrite, and woe unto the hypocrites. He called to speak to this group directly. These Pharisees. And the term Pharisee comes from a word that means to separate. These Pharisees were separate from the Gentiles. The unclean Jews who did not practice the law. But I must tell you that not all the Pharisees were hypocrites. Yes, about, history tells us about 6,000 Pharisees in that day. And many more were followers, but not full members of the group. Most of these Pharisees were middle class businessmen. 
And many of them were sincere in their trust for truth and holiness. Many of them wanted to walk the way Jesus wanted them to walk. When you think about it, we can all be bad but among those Pharisees who saw true religion was Nicodemus. Nicodemus was a Pharisee. Yeah, Joseph of Arimathea was a Pharisee. Leave the man who gave Jesus the room for the Last Supper was a Pharisee. And the Pharisees are all of one kind. And later rabbis who came along considered them spiritual ears of the former Pharisees. They had all these different groups. There was one they called the bruised Pharisees. And they kept bumping into things because their eyes were closed to avoid single women. They were called the bruised Pharisees. And this thing, their motive emphasized the fact that their motive was not to serve the Lord, but to please themselves or somebody else. Our Jewish leaders spoke of the impure and holy, but deep down inside, that was not their thunder. So Jesus pronounces judgment upon them. Jesus says this, I tell you that the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to people who will produce the fruit. Jesus says, all your hypocrisy is doing is keeping you outside the kingdom. And because you kept outside of the kingdom, it will be taken away from you and given to those who produce some good fruit. It's tragic in my mind. The thing of how teachers and preachers of the kingdom of God they block the door for those who try to enter in. Sometimes those who are supposed to lead folks into the kingdom stand at the door and block those who try to get inside the kingdom. Jesus comes and gives a whole list. He says, Whoa, because I got some problems with you. And I have a long laundry list of things that grieve me. First of all, he says in verse 3, you preach, but you don't practice. He says, Pastor Johnson, no matter how well you think you preach, your folks say you can. I want to know that you live out what you preach on Sunday morning. They practice, but they're not preaching. You say, whoa. You say, you act like and seem just to be admired by somebody else. Not to please God. You act like you see just to please others, but deep down inside, you're rotten to the core. My Lord, my Lord. He says you're proud, seek to be prominent, and exalted above everybody else. And through that, you reject true humility. You're hypocrites because you neither respond to God nor let others respond. In other words, when God says do something, you don't do it. And when somebody else is trying to do it, you tell them, if I was you, I wouldn't do that. He said, I have a list for you. He said, you are blind guys who play with man-made rules and miss the great realities of faith. Now, you know, I kind of know the Pharisees did was, it wasn't what thus says the Lord. It was what thus says the Pharisees. That's right. Their own interpretation. And the interpretation was for whoever they wanted to interpret it for. Well. Uh, they were hypocrites, Jesus says. Because you made a big do over about paying your tithes, but neglected matters like justice and mercy. Yep. You pay your tithes, but yet you cheat for in a bad way. You have mercy no one but yourself. Is that long list for you? He says, what I see you doing is focusing on outward appearances where within you're filled with greed and pride. I have a problem with you. And the sad thing was, they were just like their predecessors. They didn't get them by themselves. Come on now. 
They learned it along the way. Well. But then Jesus comes and gives a likable, played out illustration. Right. One is there's the cup and the crown. Another one is the sepulchre. They both speak the same truth. Jesus says, look at the cup and the crown. It's possible to be clean on the outside yes. and at the same time the file on the inside. Yes. Well, well. Can you imagine using this is that the file? Whatever you put inside that cup yes. will become the file. Yes. The Pharisees were careful about keeping the outside clean, but inside they were dirty and they were filthy. Well, well. What they did was clean up the part they wanted folks to see. Yeah. Yeah. And what they thought folks couldn't see, they left dirty on the inside. But they forgot something. The Bible says that God looks on the inside of a man, yeah. the inside of a woman. Yeah. Yeah. And God knows what's really going on inside our hearts. But here's the good news. As Jesus condemns it, his heart broke for them. He wanted them to do the things that were most important. Because the truth is, people of God, it's not God's desire that any man, woman, boy, or girl should die and go to hell. Well, yeah. Jesus died that the whole world might be saved. Yeah. So therefore, he sent us a warning. Don't be like the hypocrites, but find yourselves doing the things that are most important. Yes. You see, there are qualities that, is most, that are most important to Jesus. And this is what he's seeking. He's seeking a quality of justice. Yes. He says, I want you to stand up for the right. Yes. And say to God, if your best friend is wrong, your best friend is wrong. Yes. Justice. And because there are those who can't stand for themselves, if you're a part of the body of Christ, you ought to be able to stand up for someone who can't stand for themselves. Yes. Amen. He says, I want justice. Yes. He says, remember, justice stood up for you. Yep. By virtue of who you were. You could have been destroyed. But because justice came, but mercy came with it and set you free. He says, Justice. And I also want you to stand up for most important to me is mercy. Mercy is the care for the least of them. Well, people need to remind them that Jesus loves them and there is hope. No matter if it's the man laying in the street today, yeah. remind him mm -hmm. that in spite of his condition, Jesus still loves him. That's right. And that Jesus says to you, to him, rise, shine, turn from your way, and give God the glory. Yeah. He said, I mercy. Yeah. Our tragedy is our day and age. When we have so many bees and wannabes yeah. who spend their time looking down on people. Well, well. Laughing at people. But be careful who you laugh at. That's right. For the one you laugh at might be the one you need to save in your situation. The one you look down on might be the one you need to hold you up. Amen. Every time I go inside the hospital, I'm reminded of people who serve every day. Changing people, holding people, washing people. Yeah. You don't know who you're going to need this life before you leave here. Yeah. Yeah. He says, you stay mercy. And I just going to say to God, if you extend mercy to somebody else, God will raise up somebody to have mercy on you. Yeah. This is mercy, justice. And also faithfulness. Mm -hmm. Faithful to God. Yes. God should not be a second priority. Right. God should be our top priority. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. Every day of our life, our first thoughts be, Lord, what will you have me to do? Yes, Faithful to God. Faithful to yourself. God wants the best for you. And you're only faithful in striving to achieve God's best. And while you're faithful to God and faithful to yourself, you're only faithful to somebody else. And being faithful to somebody else, let your word be your word. Amen. You know, one of the worst things it is, the coming times have with people you can't trust their word. Amen. 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 Somebody. Amen. Amen. Your word is so important that once you lose your word and lose your integrity, you lost everything. That's right. Amen. That's right. And if you can't say the right word, just be quiet. Amen. That's right. Don't say a word. But you must be faithful to your word. Yeah. And if you say you're going to do something, do it. That's right. And don't come up with excuse. God knew my heart. Come on, then. yes, preach God knew your heart. You knew you were faithful in the first place. Preach it, preach it. Is that what you just said? What's important to me? You still mercy. Yeah. What's most important is that you are faithful. Yeah. You know, God wants us to obey His rules. But it's good to pay attention to the details, yes. But we'll never lose sense of our priorities yeah. in spiritual matters. Yeah. In spiritual matters, God is number one. Yeah. Right. And may I put a point here, right back, sitting over some folks. Come on now. Whatever you plan to do, make sure God's in the plans. Yeah. May not be how much we're going to make on it, yeah, yeah. but the top priority should be what's God going to get out of it. Right, right. For God gets something out of it, God will multiply what He's trying to do. Yeah. God says, God says, God says, have priorities in spiritual matters. What really matters? There's a greater understanding of greatness. What really matters to God is a greater understanding of greatness. True greatness is found in serving others, uh -huh. not in forcing someone to serve you. Well, that make this live. Okay. I'm not doing nothing for him, but he didn't do nothing for me. Well, that make it live. I'm not going to serve him or her. Let them make it for themselves. And the truth is, if you do it before God says so, if they mess up, that's between them and God. And they have to answer to God. True greatness found in serving others. I don't know about you, but I love to serve people. I love to see folks smile. I love to see folks happy. You know what? And I'm not concerned myself whether you have something or you don't have something. I don't do it because you don't have something. I do it because I'm glad to see you happy. I do it because God is good to me. The God has blessed me. And that's why the songwriter says you can be God given no matter how you try. Well, oh, two greatness. Two greatness. Is in serving others. Not forcing others to serve us. True greatness is not manufactured. It can only become, it can only come from God as we obey Him. And if you obey God, God will make you great. The text says, if we exalt ourselves, what's going to happen is God will humble us. That's why you can't stand up and pray about what you can do. God will humble you, and you wonder where that's going to come from. But if you humble yourself, and do time, God will exalt you. 
For if you exalt yourself, the very ones who put you up are the ones who will pull you down. The ones who put you out there will leave you there all by yourself. But when God lifts you up, no one can pull you down. When God exalts you, when they try to pull you down, they will hold you by your hand. The God is over. True witness is allowing God to lift us up. What really matters to Christ is the development of ourselves. People of God, every last one of us should be closer to God today than we were yesterday. Yes. 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 Don't brag to me about how long you've been a member of Charlotte. Yes. Come on now. Preach it. Get mad, devil. <laughs> but tell me, have you grown in Christ Jesus? Yes. Or oh, you're better touch the day than you were yesterday. And the end makes progress that you've grown spiritually. We need to grow spiritually. Yes. And to do so, we must ask God for directions. And the directions is found in his holy and divine word. We must grow spiritually. God wants us to grow spiritually. And we must ask Christ for directions. You see, our own development is so important. But yet, we spend so much time focusing on others. And Jesus said, what about yourself? Well, I want to grow in Christ every day of my life. And all my walk with him, I discovered some things I didn't know before. I learned some things I had not learned before. And all I can say is thank you, Lord, for speaking to me. All right. And for directing me to be the child you destined me to be. What makes and what matters most is that we are so. What really matters to Christ, what really matters to Christ, that even we grow in our Our behavior is important to God. Yes. Because our misbehavior can keep people out of the kingdom. That's right. That's right. The people who trust us are looking for us to lead them to Jesus Christ. Yes. Yes. Right, man. One of the worst things there is, and I've experienced is to go to church and not feel welcome. One of the worst things is, is to go to church and be abused. We must behave as Christians when we call ourselves Christians. Amen. church as a closed community. That's right. 
another trapless nation, visiting churches and meeting with 30 people. I found that many congregations don't want nobody to come in. They want to keep it for themselves. But the Church of God is not a closed community. It's a whosoever will. That's right. And when I come into Christ, I might not be as you are yet. But I come just as I am. I come to the open community. If Jesus accepts me as I am, washes me, and makes me a brand new creation, how can you reject me as part of this family? That's right. You can't get the church as a close community. The church is a spiritual force. Yes. Healing the broken heart. Provides comfort for those in times of trouble. Provides meaningful relationships. There's always an arm that's moving in the right direction. Because although the church gets a bad rap, I still contend that it's still the best place in town. For yeah. so when you need comfort, you find it in the church of God. Yeah. And I don't care what you drink up or smoke up, you won't find comfort. Yeah. When it's all over, we have the same problem. But when I make my way to God's house and take all my problems to him, I leave that singing what a friend I have in Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Oh, my sin is the bed. Yeah. Comfort in time of trouble. Yeah. It provides many for relationship. I know everybody's not the same. But your best friend ought to be a child of God. Amen. Amen, somebody. Amen. Your best friend ought to be someone who's part of the body of Christ and both of you are walking in the same direction. The church of God is an army that's moving in the right direction. And Jesus says, what matters to me is the development of my church. Yeah. And if the church is not moving in the right direction, yeah. it's time for the man or woman I place there to change the direction. Well, to make sure we're moving in the right way. Right. I try to live sometime when the woman of man of God is trying to move in the right direction. There are those who place stumbling blocks in their way. My Lord. Only for if they don't have the vision. Come on. Well, the vision is not for you, it's a God vision. And God says, get on board the train. And let the train move up the king's highway. He says, I want you to know. I don't want to say woe to you. I want you to spend your time doing what matters most. I want you to engage it day by day. Those things that matter most to me. Yep. And if we do those things that matters most to Christ, positive results will come. Yes. For you see, if you do what's most important to Christ Jesus, yes. what you give will be returned to you. Well, and I stand here today not telling you this because I'm begging for finance. But I declare by virtue of my living, if you give to God, God will bless your giving. Yeah. Anybody here can testify of that? Yeah. I tell you, I raise my children. Teach them to give God their best. Yeah. They can tell you right now, God is blessing them right now. Yeah. What you give to God will be returned to you. Yeah. There's also come that you will find justice. For we have an advocate. We have somebody who pleads for us every day of our lives. Yeah. We have someone around the great throne Glory. that tells God about our needs. Yeah. Even when we can't figure things out ourselves, I'm so glad that there's a Holy Spirit that tells God all about it. Yeah. Even sometimes it may seem bleak. 
But I have someone who's pleading my case. If you do what's most important to God, you will find mercy. For no matter how strong you are, there's some things you can't do for yourself. I know you can read self-help books, and after a while, they'll burn up like people. There's still some things you can do. But I know somebody. I know somebody that what I can do for me, he does for me. He is his mercy and grace. As a matter of fact, his grace woke me this morning. As a matter of fact, his grace started me on my way. You shall receive mercy. If you do what's most important to him, you will find faithfulness. And I came today to tell you that God is faithful. Yes, he is. God is faithful day by day. That's why I can sing like the Lord song writer. When I woke up this morning, I didn't have no doubt. Uh -huh. I knew the Lord would take care of me. I know the Lord would provide me. God is faithful. Thank you. And the more you develop spending time with him, you will be convinced of his goodness. Amen. The more you spend time doing what's most important to him. Yes. You find out how great God really is. Yes. The more you spend time walking with him, yes. you find yourself saying, what a mighty God we serve. Yes. For there's none like him. No matter how far you search, how wide you go, there's none like him. Yes. But if you do his will, yes. and do the things that are yes. most important to him, yes. you find yourself saying, Lord, mm -hmm. I'm praying for those who haven't got there yet. Yeah. But help me, God, yeah. to be what you will be to me. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Lord, help me not to throw bricks to somebody else. Yes, Lord. But help me, God, to walk the straight and narrow way. Help me, God. Amen. Not to look down on somebody. My Lord. But remind myself, if it had not been, yes, the Lord on my side. Yes, yes, Lord. Where would I be? God challenges us. God challenges us to do what really matters. Hallelujah. Amen. As we gather in this house today, let me call the saints of God. Following him as our Savior and as our Master and King. Somebody here might not have a relationship with the Savior. And maybe you can say, well, I'm doing certain things, but the question are you doing the things that matter most to Jesus Christ? They mm. say, well, Reverend, I do this, I do that, I'm a good person, but are you a saved person? Hallelujah. Is Christ your Savior? Can you say you've been redeemed? If not, what will Christ say? I invite you to come and die and give your life to Christ and declare to him, Lord, as I come to you, I come to you just as I am. Say, deliver me. Make me a mold. I might be able to do your will. And if you do this, Christ will accept you to his kingdom. Yes. And you can sleep at night, knowing in your heart that you've done what's most important to Christ. He loves you. He died for you. He rose for you. you now he says, come back to me. Thank you, Jesus. Maybe you stay away, but Christ says, come on back home. Maybe say, Lord, I need some time to get myself together. Well, you don't have time to get yourself together. Now is the time. And Christ has come to him. If you come, if you come, if you will come, I declare that God will be your God. Yes. There's a one who will come this morning.
can't do anything without your will. But in your will, in your way, we know all that the possible. So we receive it, we claim it, we believe it, we adopt it, and we go forth in your name. In the name of Jesus the Christ, we pray. Amen. 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 And thank God.